Hi there everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Tonight I'm quite excited as it looks set to be clear right the way through dusk till dawn and I want to make every single minute count and finish off my first proper project using the Red Cat and the 1600mm Pro. The target that I've selected is the Elephant's Trunk Nebula and in the past kind of week and a half I've been taking every single opportunity I possibly could to set up and capture a little bit of data in every single break of sky that's presented itself. So far I've captured about 80 5 minute shots and I'm really hoping to bump that count up tonight and make the most of this totally clear session if the weather holds. Uh, I hope they're going to join me and let's see how it all turns out. All right, it's dark enough now that I can actually make a start on this session. There's a few scattered clouds, uh, but they're not gonna prevent me from doing what I want to do next before the uh, session even gets underway, and that's make sure that I'm polar aligned. Now, all I've done off camera before uh, actually starting recording this segment is setting up this second camera to view the iPad screen over here, and I've just connected the iPad to the Wi-Fi network made by the ASI Air Pro. That basically talks you through the initial steps and uh, right from there we can actually jump straight in and get started. So the first thing you're going to do is just look up your north leg of your tripod and in my case I can see roughly that it's visually aligned with Polaris. Um, this is done literally just by hand, I just aligned it up like, like kind of like you would a wheelbarrow. Take the two back legs and just move it a little bit until you think you're aligned. Um, I want to take a preview shot using the ASI Air on a filter that's going to show plenty of stars on a short exposure such as just a luminance filter um, and we're doing that basically just to check before I start polar alignment that I'm roughly in focus. We can actually do a proper focus before we start the imaging session later but as long as we can see plenty of stars the plate solving algorithm for actually getting you polar aligned is going to work properly. You'll have plenty of uh, stars to sample and work from and I'm happy that that's in focus almost perfectly by the looks of things. So uh, with that said, let's proceed straight on and get into the polar alignment routine. So to reach that, we're gonna use this right hand side menu, tap where it says preview currently, and you've got many options up here. So focus, PA, that stands for polar alignment, preview, auto run plan, live and video. Now in this case, I wanna tap PA. It's gonna tell you a few little pointers. Um, well, basically all you're going to want to do is just tap the right button to start it's going to take a two second exposure plate solve that then it knows roughly where it's starting and its next move is going to be telling you to press next and it's going to rotate the mount you'll see it hopefully in a moment there you go it's just set off it's going to turn now 60 degrees and it's going to do that so that it can calculate a transformation between the first shot and the second shot all right, sorry for the small break there. My dog just started barking, so I had to take him in as it's quite late. Um, anyway, it's done the first movement, and from that it's going to be able to uh, calculate the transformation between the first and the second shots, and that's going to allow it to calculate just how far in or out of alignment you currently are. So I'm going to tap Let's Go. It's going to tell me now which way I need to move this whole rig basically so uh, the largest movement that it needs making here is this it's three degrees six arc minutes uh, out of alignment so and 59 arc seconds so I'm going to move this in the direction it's telling me it's saying to move it left so I'm going to take up the back two legs of the tripod leaving the front one down and shift them across to the right if that makes sense so that's a reasonable movement I'm going to hit refresh you can allow it to auto refresh but i prefer to make the movement allow a moment to settle and then let it do it let it do its own thing so now it needs to look right by 29 arc minutes so uh, i'm going to move it actually this amount physically so that's a small movement right i'll hit refresh it seems like up and down uh, there's very little residual error left over uh, 
these flags have got it on as quite level so uh, I never have to do too much up down leveling okay so now it needs to be right 13 arc minutes and 20 arc seconds so now it's quite a small error I'm going to move over to making fine adjustments using the uh, adjustment bolts on the equatorial head so as it's saying I need to go right that means I need to from behind tighten the right bolt which is going to obviously include a loosening of the left one I hope this is making sense still so I've made a small movement I'm going to hit refresh all right so I still need to go right but now it's a very small amount uh, two arc minutes so I'm going to just try and guess a very small movement and hit refresh a lot of people upgrade these wedges that uh, you can buy for the AZ GTI with a William Optics offering uh, and I'd like to do that too but it's just quite a lot of money and I can't really spare it right now um, so yeah the error now is in the order of arc seconds which is really rather good uh, looks like there's a small downwards movement needs making and one thing I can tell you about this wedge at least my particular sample of it is it doesn't like to be accurately adjusted downwards so you are actually better off taking it too far uh, too low and then actually adjusting upwards and trying not to overshoot your uh, your goal so with that said I'm gonna now go too low initially take it back a small amount and hit refresh ideally now this is gonna ask for an upwards movement yeah so up eight arc minutes 99 seconds so I'm gonna make a small movement up that's taking the rear bolt counterclockwise on this wedge four arc minutes another small movement and now we're in the order of arc seconds on both of them I'm gonna leave it at that I'd say that's more than accurately uh, aligned for the purposes of imaging with a 250 mil scope hopefully as you'll see um, we should be able to shoot five minutes of exposures with no problem at all really that's what it's been doing all the other nights and uh, hopefully you can see if I just hit finish even while talking you through it on camera that only took five minutes and two seconds to get a really accurate polar alignment just using the ASIS built-in alignment routine which I really really highly rate right now that polar alignment is finished I'm gonna pick up kind of where we left off in the preparation phase of getting things going so that when this cloud clears I can just get going straight away uh, and I'm gonna pick a nice bright star and looks like Deneb is well placed there up in Seda so I'm gonna to go to that and use that as a focusing star next so uh, I'll just talk you through that on the screen so we're gonna hit where it says PA and move back to preview in this case for a moment you're going to select in this little um, box that looks like a magnifying glass and it's going to tell you tonight's best targets that's all well and good it's a huge catalog of things that you can look through and it'll go to all of them it tells you the current elevation and the period in the night where it's at its highest elevation etc it's a really really thorough tool and i love using it uh, in fact so much so i'm thinking of moving over on the main rig to uh, an ASI uh, imaging system because it's so headache free uh, and I I really can't tell you how much I value that sort of thing in my astronomy sessions but uh, yeah I've used Deneb before earlier this week so I'm just going to tap that and it's going to call me a little button once you've highlighted what you wanted to select and it says go to so hopefully you can see there the mount is now going to slew away the point right up there and it's going to take a frame and again it's going to plate solve that and see just how close to being in alignment it is um, it's going to talk us through that on screen so mounts lose to target position validate if it's centered or not it's going to do that again by taking a shot and plate solving it so it's detected 2158 stars it's solved it and it's decided it's not yet centered so it's going to move and try it again so iteratively makes these adjustments until it gets your target centered or within a margin of error that it deems acceptable um, I'm going to show you a moment uh, there's a final technique that you can do where you you choose what should be in the center of screen but um, 
it looks like it's done a pretty damn good job there. I'm gonna just open tools on the side, crosshair, and hopefully you can see it has put Deneb smack in the center of the screen, which is perfect. So I'm gonna turn the crosshair off now because the next thing we're gonna actually be focusing on is the focusing. So to do that, we're gonna hit the preview button again, but this time we're gonna to go to focus. So you can see I've got a set loop of a half of a second. You could use longer or shorter, but um, it all depends on your camera sensitivity and the speed of your imaging system. Now, in this case, this is gonna be fine. And hopefully you can see on the screen that it gives you a little box. Now I'm gonna put this initial box right on that center star, Deneb, and just hit go. It's gonna start looping exposures now. It's also gonna crop in the screen at this point, so it maintains quite a high frame rate. So now I'm gonna make a finer adjustment on that box. Hopefully you can see it's live again, it's underneath my finger. I'm gonna make it very accurately aligned again on the star. Now at this point, to zoom in further, I'm gonna press the little magnifying glass. So it's gonna go in yet another step. So it's at this point that I'm gonna put the little 3D printed buying off mask that I made. Um, I made this because I don't think the red cap buying off mask is actually that good compared to a really fine diffraction grating like this. I'll show you that on screen in a moment if you'd like. Um, well, I'll do it right now. So on the red cap, you get this buying off mask built in, but it's a very coarse diffraction grating and at least quite a mushy spike, I find. So I'll just put that on. Hopefully you can see now it's settled on screen. The uh, the spikes aren't that well defined, and I find it's you know it's it's just not that good. It could uh, could stand some improvement maybe on a V2 of the red cap, but it's certainly good enough if you don't have another option. But now if I just put this on, you can hopefully see we've got sharp spikes now, and it's very easy to see how in or out of focus you are. So I'm just going to move the. Um, guiding window out of the way slightly and I can see there that actually it's already in focus I'll just make a movement in and out and hopefully you can see what that looks like on the screen so you can see I've just moved it slightly out of focus so now that central spike has moved off to the side and slightly too far in focus it's moved off to the left now And I'll just try and get it perfect. I'd say that that looks focused and I'm happy with that basically. One really cool thing about the red cat, I know I've uh, kind of just dissed the, uh, the buying off mask, but if I just show you how well color corrected this is, um, this is quite a harsh test for a telescope. So if I go from luminance filter here, and just change it while the mask is on the end. So we're gonna look at red now. You can see that that's still in focus. If I look at green, that's still in focus. It's moved the spike just fractionally off to the side, not enough to bother me. I wouldn't be refocusing at that. Blue, again, still in focus. Now onto narrowband filters, hydrogen. It's quite hard to see these spikes, so you could indeed up the exposure in this case if you wanted. So change it to one second loop, perhaps. Hopefully you can see there, but that's still in focus. Oxygen, gonna be the same. Again, just that ever so slight offset to uh, the right hand side. It's really nothing to worry about. Um, and finally we'll go to sulfur and again in focus it's it is really well corrected I can't express uh, just how impressed I am with this little scope so I'll just go back to the uh, luminance filter as I like to use that for plate solving and things and yet yeah, we're still perfectly in focus so I'm gonna go ahead and just take that mask off hit stop on the focusing routine and we'll move on to the next part which is actually getting aligned with the target 
Okay, so we can just move on to this next section now. I've just uh, had a little look at the clouds and unfortunately it looks like they're getting worse rather than better. I hope that's gonna clear up soon though. Um, but yeah, I said we'd talk about how to get a line, so let's do that now. So we're gonna come out of this tool by hitting that uh, left arrow and then tapping where it says focus, which is the module we're currently operating. And we're gonna go back instead now to preview. Just like we found and selected Deneb, we're gonna do the same thing for my target tonight, which is IC1396, I believe. I hope I've got that right. That's the elephant trunk nebula, if I could speak. And yeah, there we go, IC1396. You can see the little picture of it there, giving you a preview of the target. Now that's actually gonna align the telescope with the elephant trunk itself. And I've actually been aligning with the, the little asterism in the center of the frame uh, in the center of the nebula rather each night so i'm going to select uh, to navigate to this first initially but that's going to prevent me with a a perfect opportunity to show you how to perform a final manual plate solve and it really is fantastic how this works so it's just done its initial go to and now it's going to do what it's done each step before and that's take an exposure and see how close to being in alignment it is. So since it's already done one, yeah, there we go, since it's already done one solve on Deneb nearby, this first initial go to, it's got right in one go. Hopefully you can see there the little asterism in the middle of the frame I was talking about. Let's move the iPad slightly there, I'll have to double check focus. But if I just hit tools, you can see hopefully the crosshair is showing that it's that little asterism has moved off to one side ever so slightly so what can we do about that getting it perfectly aligned well if we zoom in and just press and hold it pops up a little button that says go now if i tap that it's going to make that movement and put that in the center of the crosshair now hopefully you can see it's going to slew and take a shot and not leave me with egg on my face looking a bit silly here um, <laughs> I'm pretty confident it's going to get it right. So it should load the preview. And there you go, it's put it smack in the middle of the frame for me. You can see there's quite a lot of cloud passing by uh, as it's just about wiped it out up there, but it still managed to get itself aligned. Now, uh, hopefully you can sort of see why I'm so excited to be using this rig now and why indeed I'm even considering switching over all my laptop and everything and getting rid of all the unnecessary in my mind clutter and just moving to something simple where it all works kind of in one program um, I can't stress enough just how much I find that um, kind of an anxiety lessening enjoyment enhancing experience and that's why I'm so seriously thinking about it um, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that, though. Would you still want to watch my videos if mainly I was using ASI Air-based rigs and things like that? Uh, it's all worth consideration because part of the whole thing for me is being able to share these things with you guys. That's what makes it so fun. So, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear what you think. But I'm going to head inside now, uh, warm up a little bit because it's chilled off out here, and uh, wait for these clouds to pass and I can make a start. Well, it's just turned about one in the morning and finally just now it's cleared up and I'm able to make a start. So let's go take a look at the iPad screen and I'm gonna show you what it is I'm actually gonna be doing tonight. So hopefully you can see the screen here. I'm just gonna take a quick preview shot and make sure that the uh, elephant's trunk is properly framed still. I was using this little asterism in the middle of the frame as a uh, visual reference. So it's just loading that frame now and it looks like it's moved ever so slightly, but really not far at all. As you can see, it's right next to the crosshair still. It looks like the stars have remained all in focus, so that's good news at least. Let's turn that crosshair off. Um, one cool thing about this is you can actually have it plate solve this image and annotate it for you as well. So you can see it is pointing at IC1396, and it's telling us that we're actually in the right spot, which is perfect. So, 
how I've got it set up tonight basically is uh, just using this auto run segment. Now you see I've got it set to take 60 frames. I've added multiple modules along the side. I've told it to do a Meridian flip itself. Um, let me just think now. So yeah, I've got it set taking hydrogen frames, oxygen frames and sulfur frames all throughout the night. So it's going to do five hydrogen, then move to five oxygen, then move to five sulfur and so forth. And it's going to repeat itself again and again throughout the night. Um, until it's finished that plan basically then i can turn all those off and just select the flats like that and the bias when i'm finished and uh, allow it to take a load of calibration frames basically so now that that's ready to go all i need to do is self guiding so i'll tap that and just hit guide it's going to pick a star now and it should open it in a moment there we are, so it's now just actually start guiding. I can close that again and just hit go. And I have forgot to do something here, as you can see, turn on the cooling, so I forgot to do that. So it's uh, hit the little shortcut there, turn it on, and if I just wait a few minutes, it'll get right down to minus 10. And uh, yeah, I'll just hit go now and get rid of the first frame probably. I'm, I'm too lazy to wait for it to cool now. <laughs> All right, so it's about a quarter to three in the morning now. Uh, give or take a few minutes. It looks like it's been running about an hour and a half, an hour and three quarters or so. Um, let's go take a quick look at the iPad screen and I'll show you some of these subframes, see how they're looking. All right, so if we just take a little bit of a look at the guide in here, uh, it looks like it's been going along pretty darned well, I'd say. Uh, I've certainly got no complaints. And if we just move to the main screen view, uh, here you can see one five minute hydrogen alpha exposure it's about to move over take this exposure and go into oxygen again but um this is just the auto stretch on the screen and you can plainly see the elephant's trunk there and it's coming up really well i'd say on these exposures um i'm happy about the sharpness as well there's a little double star there in the in the trunk and it looks like they're just about separated still even at this um sampling ratio which it's quite amazing, I think, a 250mm scope is able to capture so much detail um, from such a distant and uh, faint target, really. So, I'm thinking this is looking extremely promising, all said and done. Um, before I go off the subject of guiding, you can see that it looks like the guiding's gone mad, but actually it's kind of just moved and from showing four arc seconds of error it's just now showing two because the guiding's gotten a tiny bit better so it kind of tightens up the graph making any errors uh, look larger even though it's actually better now than it was so it's important to pay attention to this more than anything the total error um, but yeah it's looking fantastic I, i'm really hopeful Unfortunately, the clouds are back. Um, it's kind of came right at the end of the night anyway, so it doesn't make too much difference. Um, tonight certainly didn't go to plan. Uh, I had high hopes for capturing quite a lot of data, but it's just not came about. Um, I'm gonna go over to the red cat now and actually go through the process of taking some flats as that's the next thing I need to do before this data set is actually finished. Uh, so I thought I'd just talk you through that before I finish up for the night. All right, I've got everything set up kind of how I had it at the start of the night and hopefully you'll be able to see the little process uh, that I do to capture some flats using this little rig. I fetched out with me a small, well I say small, it's quite large as power banks go. Uh, but yeah, it's just a power bank that's gonna give me some USB power for this, which is the flats panel, you know, the A4 tracing panel that I use on the Esprit. Uh, I'm gonna point this straight up towards Zenith and kind of just balance this on top. It's a little bit windy tonight, but I'm hoping with me being nearby, it shouldn't go flying. Um, but the reason I've chose to power this separately is because actually when it's turned up, like when you're doing narrowband flats, it can be quite a juice hungry uh, little, little system really. So I thought it best to supplement its power since this whole rig 
is being powered just off this one five amp power supply it may be a bit much strain for it so let's jump straight over to the ipad now and i'm going to show you the process of getting ready to take these flats just using auto run so as you can see this has just last finished a sulfur exposure a cloudy one uh, albeit i'm going to go ahead and cancel guiding there and just check auto run i have gone ahead already and changed the plan slightly so the schedule now is set to be flats in hydrogen flats in oxygen and flats in sulfur if i just tap those a moment you can see how that's set up so it's bin one the same as i've been actually shooting my lights obviously i've got it set to do 20 on the repeat so that's going to take 20 flats in each filter the exposure time is set to be automatic which is really useful i'm not going to have to mess around trying to get the right exposure this is just going to calculate it itself first off with a few test exposures so i've not got the bias actually selected just yet i'm not sure if the asi air will warm me that i need to put the lens cap on the end and things like that and i'd rather just not run the risk when it's easy enough to just turn off those flats after the fact turn on the bias and run the auto run again um, but yeah right now i'm going to set up and take the flats i'll just get back to you in a moment once i've pointed this right up to zenith all right so the flat panel is on the top now i've got it powered up and i'll just go ahead and turn it on there we go that's on two out of three brightness on my panel and um, that's where i take a lot of my narrowband flats on and i can just go ahead now come out of the shooting schedule and hit to run so this now should take um, a test exposure or two on the hydrogen which is just changed filter to there and it's going to figure out exactly what the correct flat exposure is that it requires you can see it applies uh, a fairly aggressive stretch to these frames um, which really highlights any vignette You'd see indeed any dust motes if there were any to see as well on this sort of thing. Looks like it's doing a great job there. And yeah, it's already shooting away. It's picked an exposure it's happy with and it's calculated that. You can see its progress currently. It's at eight frames out of 60 for this plan. That's 20 per filter, of course. And it's basically just going to proceed and do this all automatically. I've done nothing other than just hit and go at this point. All right, a couple of minutes have passed now and it's just got finished taking its sulfur flats. So it's done a full set of hydrogen, oxygen and sulfur. And now I can go ahead and take the panel off because that's completely finished at this point. The only thing left to do now is just copy all the files across onto this little USB stick and uh, head inside, get some rest and process all these. Well, while well, things are just wrapping up behind me now, the last few files are uh, copying across. I thought I'd just take a moment now before I'm uh, finished for the night to just say a huge thank you, basically. I, uh, I really do appreciate your time, guys, and uh, I hope that you all know that. I'd like to say a very special thank you, however, as well, to everybody who has joined my channel. Um, you guys choosing to directly support me and this uh, little project like this uh, is just mind-boggling uh, i'm so thankful for your all your kindness and it really is genuinely appreciated with that said anyway uh, i'm going to be back out the next clear night you know you can count on that so uh, until then clear skies